You've never tasted a lemon drink like Solo before. Unless it was one of those great lemon squashes that pubs used to make. Extra lemon tang. Solo lemon. A man's drink. Well, if you missed out on the JHS Clean Boost pedal that they released just the other day in limited numbers, and you've got a bit of electronics experience, well, I think this video might be just for you because I'm gonna build a simple FET Clean Boost pedal. Now, I actually designed this as a project for the channel a while back, but if you know the channel, you know I'm really a bass player and I just don't know if I'll really use a clean boost pedal that much. But uh, with all the hype around the JHS pedal, I decided to revisit the design. Uh, so the other day I actually gave it a few tweaks and I even redesigned the strip board layout, but I'll talk about that in a sec. Let's, uh, let's quickly look at the schematic though first. So this is a very simple circuit. It's probably not the simplest way of creating audio gain. There's, in fact, there's thousands of ways to do that. Uh, even just using one FET, you could wire this with as much as 20 dB of gain in its own right. But I've opted to have two modest gain stages with two FETs, and I've done that for several reasons. Firstly, I just think you get better audio performance doing it that way. Secondly, this arrangement, which is what they call a common source amplifier, this actually flips the phase of the audio signal. So by having a second one, it gets flipped back, and that way your input and output are in phase, which is uh, definitely a good thing for a pedal. The other reason is that having a second gain stage like this acts as a buffer to our gain pot. Uh, and that way the sweep of the pot is predictable and even no matter what the pedal's plugged into. Apart from that, everything else about this design is pretty standard. You may want to play around with the current limiting resistor for the LED. LEDs these days vary enormously in efficiency and brightness and everything, so you may have to play around with that. Uh, I guess the only other thing worth mentioning is that there is a little bit of filtering going on between the two gain stages. This coupling cap and the pot itself create a high pass filter and this resistor and this cap create a low pass filter and the roll off points for these are way out at the very low and very top end of the audio spectrum because, well, we only want to boost audio frequencies. FETs, well, they're quite challenging to design with. Even if you buy uh, FETs uh, all from the same batch, from the same manufacturer, same part number, they have a huge data spread in terms of uh, their electrical, uh, electronics characteristics. So it's always a challenge. The FETs I've used here, the 5484s, are still readily available, but another challenge with FETs, especially through hole or, or FETs with leads on them, is that they're becoming pretty scarce. And for DIYs, that's not too bad, but certainly if you wanted to manufacture something with through hole FETs, you're going to be really limited in which, which ones you can use. The 5484s are still readily available. In fact, here in Australia, you can just go down to JCAR and buy them over the counter, which is what I normally do. The values here will work just fine, uh, but if you really want to optimize these for the most amount of headroom, for example, I'll show you later on how I do that because these uh, source resistors uh, may change. Now, when I originally designed this project, I was planning to um, just make it in a standard stomp box enclosure like that, or even one of these smaller ones. And with that in mind, I came up with this strip board layout. It's uh, 24 millimeters by 39 millimeters. So even with a battery, if you choose to use one, it would easily fit in these enclosures because you've just got the one pot, a couple of jacks and your DC jack. But when I saw the JHS pedal, I revisited the strip board layout and made it even smaller. This one is going to be quite fiddly to make. A lot of the resistors are standing up on their ends. There's a few more cuts, but it's only 21 by 34 millimeters. Because if you know the channel, you know I like to give myself challenges. So I'm going to actually try and squeeze my circuit into one of these little enclosures, just like the JHS pedal. So um, I guess what I should do is kind of mock up my circuit. And originally, I was just going to use these sort of jacks, which I often have in my own sort of stock. And I reckon with one one way and one the other way, 
plus we've got our DC jack up the other end, well, it doesn't leave a hell of a lot of room. And so the idea was to make the board small enough to fit crossways in this enclosure. So this, I've already made the board, it's this guy here. And yeah, it's very likely I can just fit it crossways like that and probably just mount it on the back of my pot, just like double-sided tape it on the back of the pot and that'll work. But the other day I was in another electronic shop, which I don't go to very often because it's quite away from where I live. It's a, if you're an Australian, uh, it's a shop called Altronics, which is worth checking out. And they've got these very small, very low profile jacks. So um, with one like that, and then one like that, even with the DC jack, I've now actually got about 40 millimeters of length and there's my sort of 33, 32, 33 mil of width. So honestly, I don't think it's actually gonna to be too challenging at all to fit this. In fact, I reckon even that original layout probably would have fitted, but it's too late now, I've redone it. The layout itself is, uh, yeah, it's, it's even though this is quite cramped and will be a little bit tricky and fiddly to solder together, it's actually a pretty simple layout. Uh, it literally took me like two minutes to make. Most of the cuts are in one line and the others, <laughs> just by happy accident more than design, if I'm honest, turned out to be symmetrical. So, so yeah, there's my little board there. Okay, I've got my FET in my breadboard. Just ignore this jack and these jacks. They're not connected. And I've got my drain resistor, 6.8K, my source resistor, 2.2K, going to earth, and also my gate resistor at one meg, also going to earth. Now, the other ch challenge with FETs is that there's no standard pin out, and these ones have, for what it's worth, from left to right go drain, source, and gate. Now, I've got my power supply hooked up, and I've set it to 8.4 volts, and that's because across this... Um, polarity protection diode, there is a voltage drop. So the circuit's actually gonna see 8.4 volts, typically with a regulated nine volt supply. If you're experimenting with a nine volt supply, you only have a nine volt supply, then the simple answer is just to wire in your diode in line with it, and that'll give you 8.4 to experiment with. Now the goal here to get the most headroom out of this particular setup is to get the drain voltage to five volts or something very close and well with this first FET it is it's pretty much bang on five volts so uh, I'm just going to leave that with 6.8k and 2.2k so let me try this other FET that I've pulled out I'll turn my supply off you always want to turn the power supply off when you're changing parts uh, so I'll try this other FET uh, and I'm getting 5.6 volts. So this will still work just fine, but it will have slightly less headroom. So if I can get this down to five volts, then I know that the peak to peak uh, headroom will be a little bit higher. There's a couple of ways I can do this. I can just leave these resistors in here and then go through all my 5484s and just find another one that works with these two resistors. But what I'm gonna do instead is actually adjust my source resistor. So with that in mind, I've just wired up a 5K linear pot with a couple of test leads. I'm gonna pull out my 2.2 and I'm gonna put that in instead. Actually, first I'll set it about halfway, give or take. The drain is at five, about six volts. So I'm gonna just reduce that slowly until I get it down to five volts or very close, very, it's, very, it's quite touchy. So, okay, so that's about, oh, it's very close to five volts right there. So power supply off, and I'm gonna pull this out without bumping the pot. And then I'll just uh, measure its resistance. And we've got one point, yeah, about 1.6 K ohms. So I could, re that's not really a preferred value in the E24 series, so I could either use a 1.5 or a 1.8. Uh, I'll have a look through my parts and just see which one I've got. So now with my 1.8K ohm resistor in there, I'm getting 5.2 volts, 
and I think that'll be close enough. Now, if you want a really deep dive into the technicalities and the real challenges of designing audio circuits with uh, JFETs, I'll put a link in the description for a really great article by Rod Elliott from the ESP website. And in this tough competition, the only place for a solo man to be is first. Solo Lemon, it's light on fizz for when you're long on thirst. So crack a solo and be a solo man. All right, my circuit board is all ready to go. After I finished wiring all the wires and making note of all their colors, I also gave the back of the board a quick spritz with circuit board lacquer. It's actually pretty important with strip board layouts because there's no solder mask. And over time, the copper will really get quite tarnished and the solder joints will get all gray and nasty looking. So yeah, circuit board lacquer is worth doing. I just put little boards like this into heat shrink uh, and that gives me a good surface for double sided tape. I'm going to take this to the back of the pot. And it also means that if it ever did become loose in the box, it's going to rattle around a bit, but it's not going to short on anything. So that's all good to go. I guess the next thing I have to do now is to drill out said box. All right, I've got my stomp switch and my three jacks mounted. And originally, as I mentioned, I was going to mount the circuit board on the back of my pots and then drop that in like that. There's plenty of room for it. The only issue though is that with a 16 mil pot, I'm going to have to mount it sort of down this way to clear my DC jack, which means my knob is going to be kind of down here. And it doesn't look terrible, but it doesn't look great either. It just sort of looks a bit odd. So I had a rummage through on my parts and I've actually found one of these little guys, a tiny little pot. And this is so small that it will actually fit underneath my DC jack. So I can actually mount this really anywhere along this center line, which means I can get the knob up closer to the end. And it just, just looks better and looks a bit closer to the JHS pedal as well. So that's what I'm gonna go, go with. Only issue, of course, that doesn't leave me anything to mount my circuit, but luckily, because this is so skinny, uh, there'll be enough room to actually mount it on the side. So that means I'm going to have to remove my heat shrink and then route the wires out this way and then redo the heat shrink in the other direction, but that's perfectly fine. That's only going to take a minute. I'm going to have to remove it anyway, and that's because this pot is actually a 50k pot instead of a 25k pot. None of the local suppliers actually have 25k audio taper pots in this size, so I'd have to order it online. It would take ages to get here. So I'm gonna go with my 50k pot. It's perfectly fine in the circuit because the input impedance of the second stage is, is well and truly high enough for that not to matter. The only thing I will have to do though is replace R6. If I leave a 6k8 in there, it means that with the knob turned all the way down, I'll actually get a little bit of cut and no one wants cut in their boost pedal. So <laughs> I'm gonna increase this resistor. Luckily, it is right on the end of the board and easy to get to. The, <laughs> the only issue now though, is that I'm trying to work out how to connect the enclosure reliably to earth for shielding purposes. Normally with a pedal build, one of your jacks would be metal and you could just use that as your earth lug and when you screw it in, it, uh, it connects the, pot, the, the, the enclosure to earth. Obviously these jacks are not like that. Um, so the plan was originally to solder it up to the pot casing, but of course not gonna happen with this little guy. So I think what I'm gonna do instead is just use a piece of copper shielding tape, just like I do in a guitar. That way I can solder directly to it. The only other thing I'll have to do is just remove a little bit of paint from one of these screw holes and that way the base will be earthed as well. All right, I've done some stuff. In fact, I've done all the stuff because the pedal's finished. <laughs> If you saw my video last week about uh, filing oval shaped holes for these little DC jacks, well, I ended up doing the same thing for these particular audio jacks. I also drilled a very small, like a two millimeter small and quite shallow little hole, more or less a, a little dimple really, 
for the anti-rotation lug on the pot and that's because these little green pots they don't have enough threads on them to install a shakeproof washer underneath. So once the box was all drilled out then I could move on and think about the graphic design and so on for the pedal. The original working title for the project was the One Louder because well, who doesn't love a Spinal Tap reference? Well, it's one louder, isn't it? But after deciding to kind of parody the JHS pedal, I've changed tack and I've decided to call it the Lemon Squash. The Aussies watching will understand the joke there, especially if you're roughly my vintage and you remember the ridiculous <laughs> ads from the 80s and 90s featuring Solo Man. If you're from Queensland, like me, well, there's kind of an extra half joke in there as well because lemon squash, well it's slang for beer. Once the uh, decals had dried I ended up um, putting two or maybe three coats of semi-gloss clear on it and while that was drying I could move on to the electronics. I replaced that R6, that resistor that sets the minimum gain. I also realized that the 50k pot would slightly affect the roll-off point of the low-pass filter so I remodeled that part of the circuit and then uh, swapped out those parts as well. Once that was done I could rewrap the circuit and then I went on and wired the pot so I could test the circuit. I ended up getting just under 15 dB of gain with the knob cranked all the way up and almost 7 volts peak to peak of headroom before clipping. What us musicians call a clean boost well, it's really anything that, that boosts without clipping. But if you're sort of a hi-fi person, uh, then this circuit's not really technically clean, and that's because it'll, it will have quite a bit of harmonic distortion. But, um, well, it's an effect pedal after all. So then I can move on to the final wiring. And, well, it is a bit of a cram in there, but you can get it done if you take your time. It is a little bit fiddly. I ended up wiring the stomp switch in situ, although it might have been easier to do outside the box and then install it. That's probably six or one half a dozen of the other. I ended up gluing the LED in place as well. I just think it looks a bit cleaner. I've done that in other videos. Um, you can use those little LED bezels though, but yeah, I, I prefer the look of it uh, glued in place. The only issue with the final wiring was really getting a good solder joint with those twisted up earth wires to that piece of copper tape. Even with my regular iron cranked all the way up, uh, it wasn't going to happen and that's because the aluminium underneath the copper tape is just a massive heat sink. So I ended up using my 80 watt soldering pencil, it's kind of chunky and I slightly charred one of the wires running to the LED, but uh, that's okay. The only other job I had to do was remove a little bit of paint from that countersink on the lid which I did very quickly with uh, just a couple of twist drills. You've been working in the high country, and at the end of a long, hot day, you've worked up that man-sized solo thirst. Solo. It's light on the fizz so you can slam it down fast. Solo. A man's drink. So I've been playing around with the pedal for a little while. It does exactly what it's supposed to. It works very well. However, I did end up changing the pot, and that's because well, with the original audio taper pot, you get a nice fine adjustment of the low range of the gain. And I guess if you used a linear pot, you'd get a finer adjustment of the upper gain range. But uh, I really wanted kind of something in between and have a more even sweep of gain through the whole range of the pot. So what I ended up doing was using a 50k linear pot but with a tapering resistor. And that's a resistor that runs from the anti-clockwise lug across to the wiper or pin two on the pot. For the prototype, I just cut out a little piece of uh, strip board, soldered the pot to that, and then installed the resistor onto that. Uh, it was the sort of simplest way to do it, but it, um, it's worked so well that I've decided to incorporate it into the final design. I've also gone ahead and changed the strip board layout to accommodate that extra resistor. In the next couple of days, I'll upload a PDF with all of the uh, info, the final design and the layouts and everything to my website. So keep an eye out for that. In the meantime though, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Uh, for now though, I'm gonna say thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.